far north of Queensland, on the continent of Australia, we find a famous ancient rainforest ecosystem. The rainforest ecosystem is a complex community of plants, animals and decomposers which have thrived together for perhaps thousands or maybe millions of years. And like other ecosystems, this community of organisms relies on energy. The energy comes from the sun. It is energy from the sun that is stored, first of all as a sugar glucose, as the plants carry out photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide from the air, water coming up from the earth, light from the sun and green chlorophyll from the leaves begin the chains that enables the rest of the community to survive. The plants that make the glucose and oxygen are known as producer organisms or primary producers. They make up the first trophic level in the ecosystem. However, the rainforest producers are not alone. They are food for the second trophic level, the animals, the consumers. Those animals that eat plants are called first level consumers or primary consumers. The Ulysses butterfly feeds on flower nectar. Its larvae eat leaves. Another herbivore or first order consumer in the Daintree forest is the peppermint stick insect. It feeds on the pandanus plant, a primary producer. The cassowary eats the cassowary plums produced by the cassowary plum tree. It swallows the plums whole. They will sometimes eat small invertebrates. So, as a plant eater and an animal eater, the cassowary is described as an omnivore. It is both a first order consumer or primary consumer and a second order consumer, otherwise known as a secondary consumer. And then we have the carnivores. One of these is the green tree ant. The ants work as a team to carry their prey back to their nest where it is eaten. This makes the ant a second order consumer. This creature is a spider, cleverly camouflaged as a green tree ant. It is able to make its way into the ant's nest and take and eat the ant larvae. This makes this spider a carnivore and a third level or third order consumer. Another spider, the orb, feeds on mosquitoes and other insects that fly into its huge web. It is also a second order consumer. Here we see the strangler fig, yet another producer. It produces fruit for one of the largest bat species in Australia. So these bats are herbivorous. The scaly bark ash also provides food for the cassowaries and the musky rat kangaroo. The musky cat kangaroo forages on the ground for seeds, insects and even fungus. It is another omnivore of the dane tree. Lace monitors or large goannas also roam the Dane tree forest. Their diet includes eggs of crocodiles, insects and the remains of dead animals that it can find among the leaves on the ground. The rufous owl is another carnivore of the Dane tree forest. Its prey includes the sugar gliders and fruit bats. The rufous owl is a top predator in this community and, as an adult, is not preyed upon by any other animal. It is an apex predator. In rivers, young crocodiles will eat crabs and fish. Adults will lie in wait on riverbanks for unsuspecting lizards and mammals. Adult crocodiles are also apex predators. The forest breaks down plants and animals when they die. Threads of fungi grow into fallen logs as they rot. Fungi and bacteria 
form a trophic level of their own. They are the decomposers. Decomposers carry out the important task of returning nutrients from dead organisms to the soil. These are just some of the community of plants and animals that make up the different trophic levels of the Daintree Forest. Together they form a food web. In food chains and food webs, the direction of the arrows shows the direction the nutrients and the energy move within the system. They point in the direction of the mouth of the eater. The dead remains of plants and animals as well as faeces are called detritus. Within ecosystems there are detritor feeders or detritivores. They are the reusers of useful food molecules. The bacteria and the fungi that finally break down the living things into nutrient salts, carbon dioxide and water, the decomposers, are recyclers. They ensure waste within the system does not keep building up and that there are nutrients available for the next generation of plants. We can now see that a food web is made up of different food chains, all beginning with a primary producer, then a first order consumer, perhaps a second order consumer and maybe an apex predator. Trophic levels are found in almost all other ecosystems. Let's look at another example, a coral reef ecosystem. Here, the primary producers include microscopic phytoplankton, seagrass, brown algae, and a single cell alga called zooxanthella that actually lives inside the cells of the coral. Many different types of microscopic animals, known as zooplankton, feed on the phytoplankton, making them first order consumers. Here we see the parrot fish which bites coral in order to eat the alga inside. The blue tang fish feeds on the brown alga. The green turtle feeds on seagrass. So these four are all herbivores. The conch, sponges, purple sea fan and coral feed on both phytoplankton and zooplankton. So they are omnivores in this ecosystem. The second level consumers or carnivores may include the crown of thorn sea star, the caribbean lobster or the flamingo tongue snail. Some of the third level consumers that can be found on coral reefs are the grapper, the sea snake, the white belly sea eagle and the white tipped reef shark. Just as in other ecosystems, coral reefs have recyclers. The sea cucumber feeds on the detritus resulting from dead plants, animals and even bacteria. Another detritivore is the banded coral shrimp. While bacteria are a source of food for sponges and coral, they are also one of the most important decomposers in the coral reef ecosystem, returning carbon dioxide and salts once again for reuse in the sea. So these are the features of natural ecosystems. They have a number of different trophic levels. Energy and nutrients move through the ecosystem in a food web. These webs are made up of different food chains including the detritus feeders and decomposers. So an ecosystem is a combination of non-living or abiotic features of the environment along with a community of living biotic organisms through which energy flows and nutrients circulate.